Uh, my name is Chris Melbourne. I'm running for the Green Party Canada. The Green Party has uh, traditionally been a very young party compared to the other parties where a lot of us are uh, uh, you know, in our 20s and 30s and very aware of just how crippling student loan debt can be. So maybe for that reason and also for the fact that I think the Green Party looks a lot further into the future than the other parties, we realize that education is key. Uh, we can't let our level of education in Canada slip or we become not only non-competitive but it, it's actually bad for society in many other ways. Educated people are more likely to understand the value of things like social programs and environmental programs and whatnot. So the Green Party has recognized the value of that and realized that you have to be willing to put in significant amounts of money if you want to have a good um, and accessible uh, education system, especially at the post-secondary level. So uh, we do have uh, good policies if you check out our platform on uh, properly funding education, particularly post-secondary education, but at, at all levels. Probably the reason, or the, the biggest reason that I'm involved with this, um, I'm certainly more than busy enough that I would have uh, preferred, um, you know, not to be as involved as I am with this election. And why did I take this? Why did I take this on? Why do I want to be a Green Party candidate? It's largely because, to me, the issue of climate change is the issue of our times. Just like if you were born in 19. The, if you were around in 1939, the issue was the Second World War. The issue for us and our generation is climate change. It's going to severely, severely affect our society and, and, and everybody around the globe. And yet we're really not doing anything about it. And uh, the policies and uh, the way that we tax our businesses, etc., actually don't help climate change and contribute to it. And, uh, the Green Party is the only party that's really recognized that climate change is central, it's key, we have to deal with it, we have to have uh, all of our major policies uh, around uh, the way that we regulate and tax uh, business and individuals have to be geared towards addressing climate change. That is the central thing. We can talk about the economy and we can talk about uh, creating jobs, we can talk about various things, but if we let the world fall down around us, uh, we all have to eat, we all have to breathe, and uh, until we're, you know, if we don't uh, sustain that, we're going to be in desperate times in the next generation or two. And I think the more that we ignore climate change and the more that we don't deal with it in, in this generation, uh, we just create this massive ecological debt for our kids and our grandkids that they're going to have to deal with that in 20 to, you know, 20 to 30 years down the line. So we, we have to deal with it right away. Yeah, I might get shot for this, but I am not in favor of spending huge amounts of money to dredge the harbor. If you look at what that's all about, uh, it's assuming that our society is going to keep um, importing huge amounts of plastic crap from China. Right? And I don't look at that as a positive thing or a good uh, business investment for the future. I look at that as an unsustainable negative business investment. The type of uh, business on a large scale that we do with China is the unsustainable stuff that ruins our planet. And uh, what we're trying to encourage here is for vast amounts of product to keep getting shipped and shipped through Cape Breton. So firstly, it's an unsustainable business which likely has no future in a world where fossil fuel prices are increasing rapidly. I don't think this is going to be a big thing in the future in the first place. Uh, maybe a little flash in the pan, then it'll be gone. Uh, and number two, the, the other thing, even if it was a sustainable business, being a on a shipping route, which is essentially what we're looking for, is not a large um, business generator. Uh, we should have learned our lesson, like the, um, the offshore gas developments in, in Nova Scotia, which have certainly, you know, made us some money, but in terms of job creation. The gas passes through our communities and doesn't really do very much for our communities. There's a, a brief flurry of jobs where you're setting it all up and then there's not a whole lot after that. And similarly, being on a shipping route 
in the short term, as we set everything up, it'll create a flurry of jobs, and then after that, there won't be a whole lot as stuff passes through here with great ecological impact. Firstly, it's, that's a very complex question. I think you have to firstly sort that out. In food, Canadians spend less on food per capita, uh, sorry, not per capita, less, uh, less percentage of our uh, incomes is spent on food in Canada than almost any other country in the world. In a lot of countries, food takes up 20, 30, 40. In poor countries, it can be, even be 50 or 60 percent of people's income. In Canada, it's 5 percent, maybe 10 percent. So we, we spend a tiny fraction of our income on food. and We probably need to spend more. We don't recognize the value of it. We pay very little for it and we get crappy food. And we generally buy uh, crappy food for ourselves and we create an unsustainable agricultural system. So that's one, one issue. Uh, the, cost of, uh, the cost of fossil fuels going up is natural and expected and normal and probably good. For a small percentage of our society, it's going to create hardships. Most of us overconsume fossil fuel by choice. We, we drive big cars, we drive for our distances, we have houses that are bigger than we need, that are poorly insulated, and we don't make the choice to reduce our fossil fuel consumption. Also, our government policies don't encourage that. So, for instance, I recently put a solar hot water heater on my house, and the rebate, the HST rebate, was so hard and convoluted, I never ended up getting it. And yet, for me, as a high income earner, I get my HST rebated off my fossil fuel. If, so if I was to leave my oil heater in and never get a solar hot water heater, I would have done better off. The government encouraging me to burn oil, but not to go and put a solar hot water heater in. So there, there's government policies that uh, encourage us to keep burning fossil fuel and don't help us to transition. Uh, and we have to understand that on a, on a global market, if we look at it, fossil fuel is going to go up and up and up. And we can't uh, protect ourselves here in Canada from that. It's going to happen. We have to adjust to it rather than, uh, you know, r rather than uh, just complain about it. The whole, the whole issue of apathy in voting is a circular issue. So the more apathetic we become about voting, the more apathetic the parties become about actually caring what we think, and the more they just try to uh, do whatever the hell they want and pull the wool over our eyes because they feel they can and they feel that they've succeeded with it with each election when people still come out. When, in most elections now, with you know voting rates of 55 and 60 percent, what that means is all, all you need to get a majority government these days is probably get 20 or 25 percent of Canadians to vote for you. And if you can keep that traditional voter base, uh, you don't have to care about everybody else and care what they think. The, the sad thing to me is that the people who tend not to vote are the people who uh, tend to be, read more and be more well informed uh, because they get more and more cynical. But I, I think people have to realize that it's key. Even if you go in and you wrote on the ballot, all you guys suck, I hate y'all, I'm not going to vote, at least that says something. When you don't vote, all it says is you don't care, do whatever you want, right? But if you go in and write something on your ballot to just say that you're watching, it, makes, uh, it at least makes parties sit up and take notice and actually feel that they have to be responsive to people's needs and wants and really think about their policies. So I think it's so important, even if you spoil your, val uh, spoil your ballot, go out and vote. Obviously, I'd rather you voted for me, but uh, uh, at, at least make a statement. Yeah, take the opportunity. <laughs>